So AM has not been a very popular hero lately, but I want to make a video about him and kind of show the way if you are going to play him, how you should play him. Because frankly, this hero is somewhat underwhelming in my opinion compared to heroes like Jug, Sven in particular, just feels like better carries than AM. He requires a lot of farm to come online and kind of dies unless he hits that hard timing. And we're going to be talking a lot about that very hard timing that you need to frankly win the game as any mage. Before we jump into the video, I want to let you guys know that you can check out guides just like this one made by top tier pros over at GameLoop.com. We have thousands of guides that can teach you the game of Dota 2 in depth and help you gain MMR much quicker than you usually would. Now let's jump into it. So I know I feel like I say this every single game, but Creep Aggro is just everything guys. Like pay attention to this clip and see why he gets these CS. So the creeps get aggro to this range creep and the only reason he gets them under his tower is because he clicks on the Lena and drags them over, right? Like he wouldn't have gotten three creeps and potentially would have died to the Sand King Lena combo by the large camp over there if he hadn't made that play. Like I, I literally can't stress enough how important it is to use this mechanic if you are playing a weak safe laner like Animage, because that's what he is, really. Like, that's what he is. He's a weak safe laner who dies very easily in the early levels, especially before he gets this counter spell, which he has now, but especially before he gets that. As you notice here, um, it's very important to understand gaps, right? He's level three, um, almost level four, actually. And the Sand King's level two, and he's using this gap where the Lina is chasing his lion to punish him a bit. So always harass your enemy. It's very important to kind of remove their ability to harass you by harassing them in the gaps, right? That's what's important. There was a separation there where he didn't have backup and therefore couldn't commit, right? That kind of gave him an opening, at least a minor opening, to at least burn the Sand King's mana. Because frankly, this matchup can go very poorly otherwise. So upcoming here, um, he sacrifices this range creep CS, and I want to show you why you sometimes just have to back off. Your hero has 700 HP, and I know it feels like I'm just ripping into any mage, but frankly, your hero, once again, cannot trade that well. So in this case, there's a big range creep CS coming up. Right? You don't want to give them away. That stinks. But he backs off, right? Thankfully, they missed the deny. <laughs> That's wonderful. But the point is that he backs off a little bit. And instead, what he does is zones out the Lina a bit so that he can get the bounty runes, right? There's a little bit of downtime where the lane's pushed up. And this is where, as a support player, you need to pull. In fact, as I say that, what is he doing? He's pulling. Guys, as a carry player, if you cannot see us and your support won't help you, you can pull. And you might be like, oh, trash any mage. How about you rank 50? This is a rank 50 player, by the way. His name's Yamson. How do you miss a pull? Well, regardless, at least now that he's gotten the range creep in the cart, the lane will start, at best, start. Thankfully, the Lina has left. But it will start to push towards him. And that's what you want, right? The Sanking shoves in the lane. And as a result, the wave is now back. So if you have nothing better to do, and your lane's trash, and your support will not pull as anti-mage, go pull. Like, I mean this. If you can't get your support to pull while you ask them kindly, then do it yourself. Like, <laughs> just do it yourself. So here he makes a very nice play where he kind of reads the Sanking stun. And I just want to talk about his build. So he goes for the max counter spell, which I think is interesting, right? The enemy team is majority magical damage, so it has some merit. In fact, like for the early game, they're basically all magical damage. But one thing it does is it allows him to, to lane, right? Because frankly, as I keep saying, your hero kind of stinks in lane. Here, we'll make a quick examination of this counter spell. But it allows him to lane a little bit more effectively. Now the blink is also great for laning because it can help you get the pulls off that we talked about and engage and disengage. But here, why can he read the stun here? Like how do you potentially even see this? Well, there's no creep for Sanking to go for here, right? Besides maybe this deny. But Sanking is not a hero that notoriously goes for denies, right? It's a hero that tries to put pressure. So as a result, he sees the Sanking turn around. We'll look at it one more time. And he realizes they're both set up for, for a kill, right? They're both set up for at least harass. And as a result, he reads it, and it's a really beautiful play onto the Sand King, punishing him pretty hard. And in fact, it gets him a kill. So, pretty next level there. Basically, you just have to read into your uh, opponent's movements. Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to get this kill. But he makes a great play reading into the fact that Sand King hasn't been able to pressure him a lot yet. And as an offlaner, you're going to get more impatient and more and more impatient over time as the lane goes on. And he reads that little bit of a turnaround or step up. Even when Sinking isn't a hero that would go for something like a range creep deny and is able to get the counter spell off, which nets him a kill. So really do try to read into those situations because worst case scenario there, he would have missed the counter spell and then been able to blink away as it was ending. 
right? That's worst case scenario. So no joke, guys, if you're going to play AM, this is like, I guess the only way you win your lane. He also picked in the Sand King, and I, I've talked to this player quite a bit. He likes to play the Animage against the Sand King for this exact reason. But you notice, once again, there's no play for Sand King to make here, right? Frankly, there's just no play. He's not going to go for this Deny. It's a Quelling Blade Animage, and it's a range creep. There's no way a, a, a good Sand King would know that he's not going to get this range creep Deny. So he reads it and sees, okay, there's literally nothing for Sand King to do here besides maybe cast Sandstorm or Stun, right? And he reads it. And is able to hit a really nice play once again onto the Sand King. Right, that's not easy, but you have to look into the minor things to really read those type of things. Or you just have to know your opponent. What ends up happening is nothing good, right? But I just want to show that anyway. <laughs> like they still die, <laughs> but still, it was cool. So here he's going to pick up Treads. Um, I personally think he should have bought them a lot earlier. A lot of Animages we see now focus a lot more on buying Wraith Bands and Treads early so that they can farm side camps. This is something to important to consider, right? Buying Treads and things like Wraith Bands don't delay your Battle Fury for a couple of reasons. They allow you to farm small camps and side camps a lot faster. You notice here, if you wanted to take this camp, he could now. Um, he could take the side camp if he wanted to as well, especially if he had Wraith Bands in particular. So don't look at it like these items delay your Battle Fury. In fact, they get you there faster because you're going to be able to pressure your offlaner a lot more effectively. You're going to be able to survive ganks much more effectively, and you can take side camps much faster. Not only that, if you get the Battle Fury early and you don't have stat items, you barely can farm camps because you have no attack speed. So please, don't completely skip small items. Have at least Treads or at least Wraith Bands. In fact, I'm personally a fan of both. I think it's the most reliable and the easiest to execute, as the more stats, the better. But keep that in mind. Really change your perspective to looking at it like that. Now you're going to notice after he puts a few points into his counter spell just for the lane and one more into um, Mana Break, as that is typically looked at as the value point for whatever reason. <laughs> it's just... Typically what you see, two points and mana break on AM, he's going to start to max out his plank. Right? You don't want to completely skip the spell. You don't want to be 414 as he feeds, but do keep that in mind. You don't want to commit that hard. So now he just died, right? It's 12 minutes in, his CS is fine, his kills are whatever, deaths is fine. Um, Where's he going to TP though? Right? He has a couple options here. He could TP mid, the wave is kind of pushing in. He could farm the nearby camps, but his team is around there. So that's maybe not the best option. He could go top, but then he would have to lane against the Morphling and... AM doesn't really like the lane against Morphling. Morphling just has way too much damage and stats with this build, so that's not so good for him. Especially if the Morphling turns into him, it's even worse. So if you think about it that way, his best option is to go back bottom and continue laning against the Sand King, especially now that Laguna Blade is down for at least a little bit. So that's what he's going to do. You notice it's not so great, but he's at least going to get a little bit of support. In fact, he's going to get run out. Now, this is something, honestly, you won't see necessarily in your games. You'll get run out less and less, depending on your MMR. Um... Oh boy. <laughs> you notice, right, his options aren't that good. Frankly, like, his Leshrac isn't coming over to help, which you could look at as terrible, right? It's not great by the Lesh. In fact, the Lesh should be probably playing for a little bit more gangster or side lane pressure. He is getting towers, however. But you notice, this is kind of weakness of the hero. So what we want to focus on now, and what I'm going to spend the rest of the video talking about, is how he comes back. So first off, this is your worst case scenario, where you just completely leave the lane and just start full-time jungling. But... At some point, if the game is this hard, you do have to take triangle camps. So you notice he even gets a slight gap mid to get a singular creep, and he takes it, right? Lane creeps are much, much better than the jungle. But keep in mind, at some point in the game, if the lanes are really that bad, where in this game he can't lane against Pango Bid, can't lane it really against the Morphling top, and at this point, the double stun lane is too much of a threat to him, right? So instead, what he's going to do is jungle, he picks up some bounties, and now is looking for... <laughs> Is looking for any lane possible to farm. Right? He's looking for anything possible. Is he showing up to this bottom fight? No, he is not showing up to fights. Do not pick any mage and fight previous to two or three items. And I mean this. Don't even consider it. You might be like, well, well, Miracle does it. I see him pick up a kill. Yes, because Miracle is bonkers good at this hero. And he really understands the limitations and his ability to jump in and out. Also, it doesn't really affect his, his farming patterns. Typically, it will be based around his farming patterns. And less so just him trying to take fights, right? And that's very, very difficult. So at a base value, I would stay away from fights. What is easiest is to dodge fights and focus on your item timings, right? Because this game... It's so hard for AIM to fight. They have Pango, who is going to disarm him and chain stun him. Alina, who's going to stun him. 
a Morphling who can easily man up on Animate for the majority of the game, a Sanking who's just going to stun him, and a Kinetic Field, right? There's nothing AM can do to live from Static Storm Kinetic Field. So it's a hard game for AM. It's as simple as that. So do not show up the fights, even in games where it might look like a good AM game, where they have like a bunch of magical heroes, because that's typically the quote-unquote good AM game, even though they can kill you early. But instead, he's going to go to the enemy safe lane and take the open farm. I promise you guys, look at your own ancient games, Ancient Below, Divine and Below, even Immortal and Below. Not kidding. Like, this is, this is really the upper echelon if we look at the thing, like, a lot this is a super high ranked game right and typically what will happen um is that the majority of fights will go down in the enemy safe lane or your safe lane i'm sorry and what will happen is the whole enemy top side of the map whether or bottom side depending on your side right if you're dire will be open right the enemy safe lane will be open now in this case the enemy team is very good right this is limp complexity's mid laner and a top tier support player so they're gonna gank the am right which is why i said it's a hard am game that's a fantastic gank by them with only one out of place ward, right? That is not easy. In fact, in your games, you won't get ganked like this. Period. You will not. I promise you. And it might sound weird, right? Like, well, oh, this guy just died. How could you tell me to farm top like this? No, I assure you, look at your games and look at what lane is open. You will easily be able to recognize if you really pay attention to what lane is just purely not being farmed, where you should be on any mage, because that is your priority. It is not. And I repeat, it is not to take fights. You are trying to dodge enemy heroes, not run into them and hit some big mana void. That is for level 18 enemy mage, not level 11 enemy mage or below, or even around 15, 16, you're typically not strong enough. So you're going to notice in this case, this game's really hard, right? Bottom lane, they have um, the, the Lina, I believe, set up. Actually, let's just go into free camera and check it out for ourselves. But okay, they actually have no one set up. But the lane's pushed in. He has no vision, right? So he doesn't know where anyone is. There's top, top, same thing, right? He has no vision, right? They have this ward, which is great, but he has no idea that Lina just TP back to base. She could threaten him and easily push him out of the lane. So what does he have to do? He has to farm the triangle. Once you get your battle fury, this is a little bit better of an option because you can start to look to tank ancients. But at this point, what you have to do, especially the better and better you get or the higher MMR you rise, you have to wait for people to show and in this case, he sees the Sanking mid, so he's going to feel a little bit more confident to go top. This is even a little bit dangerous, but what you will notice is he sees the Disruptor now. So there's more uh, of a willingness to push in top. It makes a lot more sense, right? He's going to push in top. Now, in this case, right, he's going to see his team fighting mid. They're all diving mid, which means he can go even further. So this will probably um, tell him that he can easily push in this top wave, which is what he does. And now his team's taking an all right fight and actually ends up pretty decent for them. They did lose mid tower, but it's space. And what is he doing? He's farming all the nearby camps, right? Except not, not too deep, right? He doesn't have a Shrine Ward, so he's not farming this camp or this camp, this camp, or this camp. That's too deep because they could easily catch him there. There's not good escape routes. But he did farm this one, this one, the small camp, medium camp, small camp, and the large camp. And now he can go back to the triangle once they collapse back on him. Frankly, guys, a lot of the times people won't even collapse back on you. You can even go, like, you actually could go deeper or cut another wave here. The enemy team understands that they have to threaten this AM, so they do. Wow, great gank. Heads up play. But most of the time, yeah, you just will stay top. In this case, right, a fight breaks out, what is he going to do? Shove in the wave. You're not in a place to fight. That is not any mage. I will continue repeating, uh, to repeat this. But you notice, he gets an outside kill, right? He picks off the Morphling, and now he understands that they're going to focus him if they see him. Because you're a 1,000 HP hero. 1,000 HP. That's not over an exaggeration. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. But you notice, like, how much pressure the enemy team is putting on him? Guys, if you can't get farm and, and like, hit hard timings in your bracket i'm sorry to break it to you and i'm sorry to be that guy i'm gonna sound mean here but if you can't find farm on the map and you're low like anywhere from low immortal to below then you're just looking at the map wrong people won't run at you like this this is the upper echelon of dota and he's still managing to find 150 cs by the 20 minute mark if you can't get 150 cs coming out of a good lane in the games where you're not getting run at because he is consistently gun and run at after every single engagement because the enemy team recognizes that he is a threat you're not going to be able to go up an mmr in fact you shouldn't right you have to be able to carry games when you're given space he is not taking fights and neither do you don't say well then can i just take fights because the enemy team's not good if that's your logic no your hero if you die once is going to get set back you have to hit brutally hard timings like obnoxiously hard timings to actually be able to fight as anti-mage that's the reality of the hero right 
in this situation, you notice, like, what is he supposed to do here? His team's going on, and in fact, he's even, like, he wants to help because he understands how hard this game is for his team, but you can't. And, yes, this is the weakness of AM. This is why I would typically recommend staying away from this hero, because you cannot take engagements early on, especially against any team that's ahead. So what does he do? He shoves in top. The enemy team shows mid, which prompts him to go shove in the wave, right? He's constantly paying attention to the enemy heroes, as you can tell by his camera movement. And you notice now they back, they're off the map, and what does he do? He backs off. But he's not going to back off too far. He'll probably live to take this nearby camp. It's not here, so he's going to have to go back to his triangle, right? He has no more options, because the enemy team is going to back now. But you notice, he shoves in the wave, he forces enemies to come back, and then he farms the triangle. It's not the opposite order. If the enemy team is making any sort of aggressive play, then he's going to farm the enemy side of the map. Frankly, what you'll see a lot of the time is a entire enemy team bottom, which means as a hard carry, you should be top, and vice versa. If they're top, you should be bottom. That is how Animage works, right? Like, period. You cannot, don't like try to push the limits of Animage and go farm where five enemy heroes are, make your game easy, and dodge. You notice he sees the Morphling bottom, which prompts him now to go top, right? He's he, Has he farmed bottom this game, guys? No, the answer is no. He is not. He is not. He pushed in mid a couple times, but he has not gone bottom because this is typically the natural state of Dota at every bracket. Yes, SCA Dota, that includes you, all right? You can't just exclude yourself. I feel like half the YouTube comments I read are like, in SCA Dota, this would not apply. Yes, it would apply, all right? <laughs> it's kind of a joke, but hopefully you guys get the point. Now, he hits his Manta timing, but what happens? He sees the Morphling bottom, and this is a gap from the fight. This is one of the only situations. Not only that, he has his Manta, so he's a little bit stronger now, or a lot a bit stronger now. He's able to actually take a fight. Right, you, if you're going to fight as any mage in the early game, or like even when you only have Manta, frankly, you still have to split people up. Like He's still weak enough where if he was to show up to a fight with this Manta and it was 4v5, 5v5, he would die. Just instant die. So, the only time he fights is when he forces them top by shoving in the opposite side of the map and TPing into a good fight. If you're not doing this, I highly recommend you try it out because it is extremely effective. And a great way to get farm. You notice, where does he go? All the way from bottom. Shocker. Back to top. Wow. And he's even going to get pressured out, right? I mean, it's Alina, so she can't kill him. Hallelujah. But at this point, at least he can use Mantis now. But he forces them top, and he's back to the jungle. Trust me. He has to go back to the jungle a bunch in this game. A lot of the times in your games, what you see, if you really analyze them and look at the replay, is that you could have farmed top for 2, 3, 4, 5, even 10 minutes in some games, longer. It's just like, lanes will just be abandoned. Do not let lanes go abandoned. You'll notice he is constantly shoving in the lane where his, where his team can't. But it's not dangerous farm. Like, it looks like the dangerous farm, but it's not. Why? Because he's patient and paying attention to where enemy heroes are showing. Right? They show top here. And now he's going to TP in, because he feels like he can fight with this timing. Also, the enemy team had a kind of a blunder with letting the, the Sanking die. But you notice, he's still not that strong. Like, this fight's still not that easy. He kind of has to wait for Disables to jump in, which he does. And in fact, there, I, I wouldn't even have Mind MC just continue splitting bottom, to be frank. Like, you guys literally can ignore the fights for the first 30 minutes, and I think it's totally legitimate. Like, in fact, I think it's the easier or the best play. Great jump. And now he's picking them apart, right? He's splitting up the fight, but he's playing around the supports and not going for any solo play shenanigans. But back to my point, you really could split push for 25 30 minutes and it would be totally justified because frankly if you're not splitting up the enemy team or taking fights where you only tp in if it's advantageous you notice he has not initiated fights the only fights he has taken is when he splits them up or tps into a winning fight right if tping into a winning fight to pick up some cleanup kills is fine right because there's a low chance you die and a high chance you get kills that works right that can work but you notice now if we look at the net worth he's number one by 5k in a game where they ran at him quite effectively for a large portion of the game. So now he gets Aegis. They managed to get a DD and pick up Aegis. And what does he do? He goes back top to shove in the lane again. You can't stop farming. Like, frankly, guys, you can't stop farming. If you ever stop farming on AM, you are going to lose because this hero has to be ahead in net worth to fight. I rarely see a game where I'm like, oh, this is such a great AM game where you can just fight naturally because of the state of the game. And then YouTube comments, Oh, but what if it's a Zeus Skywrath Storm Spirit game? 
well, still, you're gonna get silenced and die. Like, I genuinely think that there is no game where AM can just straight up fight, so you really have to continue pushing lanes until you hit this, like, three item timing minimum. This is a minimum, right? Even in this game, I would tell you, if he doesn't have Aegis here, he can't push that mid tower, because they can kinetic field and just kill him. It wouldn't be that hard. Like, it, it really wouldn't. So, he's gonna farm his BKB, and by the way, for items, um, we'll talk about it, but as a standard, you go the Treads, Battle Fury, and Manta. This is, like, the basically the only way to play AM. You, you can't delay your timings and play AM as a fighting core, it just doesn't work. Um, I read something, a uh, comment about that, someone was like, oh, you could go Yasha and Vanguard and fight, but no, if you go Yasha and Vanguard, you still easily die. Like, you're, you're barely tankier, and you do no damage, you have no stun, you have no control. Even if you buy an Orb of Venom, it still would be hard for you to track down people and actually secure any kills. Nah, you, you have to play AM as a hero, where you're gonna get three items, and try to take over the game. You notice, he is 6k above the enemy team, and I believe this game doesn't end anytime soon, which is why it's crucial for him to continue farming. If you notice here, he's gonna look to walk in and just kinda hit people. But right, like, if, if he doesn't have Aegis, he is... 6k 7k ahead and still dies insta dies right like your hero really has to be extremely diligent to make it work so thankfully he gets his bkb which allows him to sort of fight but once again he sort he pretty just much gets driven out i mean at, thankfully at this point he tanked a lot of spells so his leshrac was able to clean up that's basically how he did damage that fight it wasn't him directly but they even lose the fight, and now that the fight has gone south, he TPs and is continuing farming. You have to stay ahead. He is four-slotted and still insta-dies, right? In your games, if you feel like you're above your bracket and no one's farming, because frankly, people are just awful at farming, like really bad, <laughs> then you maybe are just going to be able to hit the point where you get your Scotty and, farm and, and fight to win. But as you go up and up in MMR, you should develop this habit where you don't stop farming. He is four slotted and he is not looking for some pick off, right? He is looking to build the proper items and hit a timing where maybe he can at least get a pick off. At least. Because <laughs> this is just how AM is. I just want to cover talents briefly. So he went the 20 attack speed, which is better for farming. You can take the 10 strength, but once again, your objective for the first 25 30 minutes is to farm, so you shouldn't do that. Then he goes for the 400 blink cast range. This allows you to split push a lot more effectively. Um, you might be like, oh, but the edge is great for farming, which it is. But the 400 blink cast range does a couple things. It allows you to split push a lot more effectively, bounce from jungle camps to lane. Also, what it allows you to do is initiate from out of vision in a lot of fights, right? You can stay out of ward vision and get a proper jump, get a good abyssal blade off later into the game, and just find the proper targets. And then at level 20, he goes for the blink cooldown. This is just a better choice, period. The uncontrollable illusion is just not that practical, where having a 3.5 second blink is fantastic. And then in this game, because they have a lot of magical damage, he goes for the counter spell, right? It just makes sense. Let's look at this upcoming fight and check out what he does. So here, he doesn't want to get chain stunned, so he's going to instantly blink in a BKB. Identifying that the sinking is a pretty big kill, right? I think he could have also looked for the Lina here. This would have been a good option if he just went around from this side and looked for Lina to disrupt her. Would have been a good target. But Sanking's solid as well. Because he has his BKB, he can opt to do this. If he doesn't have BKB in this game, he has to go for one of these backliners 100%. But in this case, he's able to kill the Sanking. Who would kite him out otherwise? And with a solid bash, he's able to pick up the Lina kill. And at this point, he can continue going forward, right? He's strong enough where he can sort a man up. Um, but you notice the fight goes kind of meh, right? A bunch of his teammates still dies. And what does he do? Shocker, guys, he continues farming, right? He's not pushing objective, he's farming. Alright, we're going to look at one more fight to wrap up this video. So here, you're going to notice what I suggested last game is what he does here. So when you get very farmed as AM, it's often extremely easy to burst supports. In this case, um, he has to DD, but if the fight breaks out, like, this is just the thing at Dota. If you're a backlight jumper, if a fight ever breaks out, like, in front, you always just look for a little bit back. Like, typically, that's exactly where supports are. If the pang goes here, the, the disruptor's here. If you go to the opposite side of the map, if if the enemy team is coming from this area and a pango is here on this hill, the, the supports are going to be here or here. So you kind of just, like, look for whatever distance back that is and base it on that. So in this case, he actually gets glimpsed, like a fantastic glimpse by the disruptor. Go back to player perspective. But now he makes a kind of a blunder. Doesn't kill off the Sand King with that. 
but he's looking to pick off the fight, so here he identifies that the Pango is a free pick off. But overall, his objective there was to look for the Disruptor. I don't think that was like a perfectly played fight by him. Kind of messed up on the Sankin kill. But overall, looking for the easy kills on the backline is the easiest way to play as any mage, especially in these like mid to late game fights. So I'm going to wrap up the video here, guys. Hopefully now you have a better direction in playing any mage uh, in your upcoming games, but keep this in mind. Like, no matter what you do, if you're not looking for the next creep camp, after a fight, after a TP, after anything, frankly. If you're not looking for the next creep camp or the creep wave, primarily creep waves, you're not playing the hero to his capabilities. In fact, you're just going to lose because your hero doesn't fight that well. Like, in, in comparison, the thing that your hero does well is split up the map and farm. Like, force bad engagements by splitting the map. You notice here they take ages and what does he do? He goes and pushes in more waves. Look, look at even his lines. Look at the lines, guys. Mid in, top in. Because he wants to force in the map and create a pickoff situation. That's how you gotta play AM. You have to build the net worth lead like this, or else you won't be able to man up to the likes of a hero like Morphling, of Sven, of Jug. It's just how the hero works. Hopefully you take this into consideration in your next game. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, before I leave you, I just want to remind you that over at GameLeap.com, you can check out guides just like this one, made by top tier pros. It will help you gain MMR faster, it will help you learn the game much more in depth, and overall, just increase the experience of your Dota gameplay as you will crush your opponents simply by knowing more than them.